The nursery was adorned with pastel colors, and the sweet scent of baby powder lingered in the air. Sylvia meticulously organized baby clothes, blissfully unaware of the storm brewing in her marriage. As she sifted through a stack of neatly folded onesies, she noticed an envelope tucked away, its edges worn. Curiosity peaked. Sylvia opened the envelope to find bank statements and financial documents, evidence of a betrayal she hadn't seen coming. The money set aside for their child's birth, carefully saved by both Sylvia and Alex, had been surreptitiously used for something else. The betrayal cut deep, leaving Sylvia feeling a mixture of anger and disbelief. The confrontation with Alex was inevitable. That evening, as they sat in the dimly lit living room, the weight of the revelation hung in the air. Sylvia, I can explain, Alex stammered, avoiding eye contact. Explain? How do you explain stealing from our child's future? Sylvia's voice trembled with a mix of anger and hurt. I didn't think you'd find out. It was just a temporary setback. Alex defended himself, attempting to downplay the severity of his actions. Temporary setback. Our child deserves more than a father who steals from their savings. What else have you been hiding from me? Sylvia's frustration erupted. The room echoed with the tension as the couple faced a crossroads in their marriage. The betrayal of trust cast a shadow over the nursery, turning what should have been a haven of joy into a battleground of broken promises and shattered faith. Was this all a lie, Alex? Our plans for the future, our dreams together. Sylvia's eyes welled with tears, searching for answers that seemed elusive. I messed up, Sylvia, but we can fix this. I promise, Alex pleaded, his sincerity clouded by the deception that had come to light. As Sylvia struggled to comprehend the magnitude of the betrayal, she wondered if their love could withstand the cracks that had suddenly appeared. The nursery, once a symbol of hope, now stood as a silent witness to the fragility of trust in their unraveling marriage. Sylvia spent sleepless nights poring over the financial documents, trying to unravel the complexities of the web of deceit that Alex had woven. The cold, harsh light of the laptop illuminated her strained expression as she discovered hidden debts, undisclosed expenses, and a financial mess that seemed insurmountable. One evening, as the tension between Sylvia and Alex reached a boiling point, she confronted him in their makeshift home office. What is all this, Alex? How deep does this financial mess go? Sylvia's voice was a mix of frustration and desperation. Alex shifted uncomfortably in his chair, avoiding direct eye contact. I didn't want to worry you. It's just some debts that got out of control. I thought I could handle it. Handle it? You've jeopardized our future, Alex. And for what? Sylvia's anger was palpable, her disbelief turning into a harsh reality. I didn't think it would come to this. I was trying to protect you. Alex attempted to justify his actions, though the tangled web of lies was unraveling. Protect me? You've left us vulnerable, Alex. How can I trust anything you say? Sylvia's frustration escalated as the weight of their financial troubles pressed down on her. As Sylvia confronted the harsh reality of their financial situation, Alexa's remorse collided with the stark realization that their marriage was on the precipice of collapse. The once solid foundation of their relationship now seemed shaky, built on a shaky ground of financial irresponsibility and hidden debts. I promise, Sylvia, I'll fix this. We can work through it together, Alex pleaded, desperation in his eyes. But Sylvia, now acutely aware of the tangled mess they were in, couldn't shake the feeling that the damage might be irreparable. The room, once a space for shared dreams and aspirations, now echoed with the harsh reality of a marriage hanging by a thread. The intricacies of the financial web seemed overwhelming, leaving Sylvia to question if trust could ever be rebuilt. Sylvia's frustration and heartbreak intensified as she realized that Alex's actions were not only influenced by financial recklessness, but also by an unwavering loyalty to his mother. The emotional distance between Sylvia and Alex grew as he continued to prioritize his mother's opinions over his wife's concerns. 
One evening, as Sylvia tried to address their marital issues, she found herself competing with the looming presence of Alex's mother, Margaret, who held an unquestionable influence over her son. Alex, we need to talk about our marriage. We can't keep ignoring the problems, Sylvia pleaded, her eyes searching for a connection that seemed to be slipping away. Margaret, always lingering in the background, interjected with a dismissive tone, Oh dear, don't burden my son with unnecessary drama. He has enough on his plate. Sylvia's frustration boiled over. This is our marriage, Margaret. We can't pretend everything is fine when it's falling apart. Alex, I need you to prioritize us. Alex, torn between his loyalty to his mother and his strained marriage, hesitated. Sylvia, mom knows what's best for us. Maybe we should listen to her advice. Listen to her advice? Alex, we're your family now. Our marriage should come first, Sylvia argued, feeling the weight of being second to Margaret's influence. Margaret, unfazed, chimed in, I've seen the world longer than you, dear. Alex values my advice, and you should be grateful for it. Sylvia's frustration turned into a sense of isolation. The divide between husband and wife widened as Margaret's presence overshadowed their attempts to mend the broken pieces of their marriage. We're a family, Alex. I need you to stand with me, not against me, Sylvia implored, her voice cracking with the weight of unspoken emotions. Alex, caught in the middle, struggled to find his voice. The room echoed with the tension of a marriage teetering on the edge, where loyalty to a mother threatened to overshadow the commitment made to a wife. The chapter closed with Sylvia grappling with the realization that in Alex's eyes, perhaps mother did know best. As Sylvia embarked on the journey of motherhood, she found herself navigating the challenges alone. Alex's indifference to fatherhood became increasingly apparent, leaving Sylvia frustrated and questioning the foundation of their family. One evening, surrounded by the soft glow of the nursery's nightlight, Sylvia broached the subject that had been festering beneath the surface. Alex, our daughter needs you. You can't stay on the sidelines, Sylvia implored, cradling their newborn in her arms. Alex, distracted by his phone, glanced up briefly. I'm just not good with babies, Sylvia. You're doing fine without my help. Frustration etched on her face, Sylvia responded, This isn't about being good with babies, it's about being present. She deserves to have both parents involved in her life. But I have work, Sylvia. I'm doing this for our family, Alex defended, his attention still divided. Sylvia sighed, feeling the weight of his silence. Alex, being a family means more than just providing financially. It means being there emotionally, especially for our child. As the chapter unfolded, Sylvia grappled with the loneliness of silent fatherhood, realizing that the emotional support she longed for was absent. The nursery, once a symbol of hope, echoed with the hollowness of unspoken words and unshared responsibilities. I thought having a child would bring us closer, Alex. But you seem more distant than ever, Sylvia confessed, her eyes pleading for a connection that seemed elusive. Alex, immersed in his own world, replied with a shrug, I'm just trying to give our daughter the best life. Isn't that what matters? It's not just about material things, Alex. It's about creating a loving and supportive environment, Sylvia countered, her voice tinged with disappointment. The chapter closed with Sylvia questioning whether the silence that had settled over their family was an insurmountable barrier or if there was still a chance for Alex to find his voice as a father and partner. The nursery, once filled with dreams of a harmonious family life, now echoed with the deafening silence of unspoken words. The weight of household chores and childcare rested solely on Sylvia's shoulders, leaving her feeling like a solitary figure in the labyrinth of responsibilities. Frustration and resentment grew as Alex remained indifferent to the burdens she bore alone. One evening, as Sylvia struggled with a crying baby and a sink full of dirty dishes, the dam of unspoken grievances burst. Alex, I can't do this alone. I need your help, Sylvia pleaded, exhaustion etched across her face. Alex, lounging on the couch with his phone, replied casually, 
I've had a long day at work, Sylvia. Can't you handle this for a while? Tears welled up in Sylvia's eyes as she juggled the demands of motherhood. I thought we were in this together, Alex. I need you to be present, not just physically but emotionally too. Alex, seemingly unfazed, retorted, I provide for the family. Isn't that enough? It's not just about providing, Alex. It's about being a partner and sharing the load, Sylvia explained, her frustration reaching a boiling point. The room, once filled with the sounds of a happy family, echoed with the strains of a relationship burdened by unmet expectations. Maybe you're right. I should help more, Alex conceded, though his tone lacked conviction. Sylvia, feeling the weight of unacknowledged emotions, responded with a hint of bitterness. It's not just about helping, it's about being a team. I can't do this alone. As the chapter unfolded, Sylvia confronted the harsh reality of shouldering the responsibilities alone. The nursery, once a sanctuary of shared dreams, now seemed to mock her with its emptiness. Alex, our family needs more than just financial support. It needs you, Sylvia pleaded, her voice a mix of desperation and longing for a connection that seemed elusive. The chapter closed with Sylvia questioning whether the burden of solitude would define their family or if Alex would step up to share the weight of their responsibilities. The nursery, once a symbol of unity, now stood as a stark reminder of the growing chasm between them. As Sylvia grappled with the challenges of her strained marriage, the looming shadow of Alex's mother, Margaret, cast an unspoken influence over their lives. The tension between Sylvia and Margaret escalated, creating an environment of discomfort and neglect. One afternoon, as Sylvia attempted to engage Alex in a heartfelt conversation about their relationship, Margaret's intrusive presence became evident. Sylvia, dear, let Alex focus on what's important. I'm sure he has work to do. Margaret interjected, her tone sweet but authoritative. Sylvia, frustrated by Margaret's constant interference, responded with forced politeness, Margaret, this is a private conversation between Alex and me. We need to work through our issues without outside influence. Margaret, undeterred, retorted, I'm just trying to help, dear. I've been married longer than you, after all. The room, once a space for open communication, now echoed with the unspoken tension between wife and mother-in-law. Sylvia, maybe mom has a point. She knows about relationships, Alex said hesitantly, torn between his loyalty to his wife and his mother. I'm not disputing her experience, Alex, but our marriage is between us. We need to find our own solutions, Sylvia asserted, frustration evident in her voice. As the chapter unfolded, Sylvia found herself caught in a power struggle with Margaret, who seemed determined to maintain her influence over Alex's life and decisions. You need to understand, Sylvia, that Alex values my advice. I'm just looking out for his best interests, Margaret explained, her words carrying a hint of condescension. I married Alex, not his mother. We need to build our own life and make our own decisions, Sylvia replied, her determination unwavering. The nursery, once a symbol of potential happiness, now seemed tainted by the presence of Margaret's influence. Sylvia wondered if her marriage could ever escape the shadow cast by a mother's unwavering hold on her son. The chapter closed with Sylvia grappling with the realization that her attempts to build a family were constantly being overshadowed by a mother's looming presence. Frustrated and feeling emotionally abandoned, Sylvia made the difficult decision to seek solace at her parents' home during her maternity leave. The once joyous anticipation of welcoming their child had given way to a strained marriage, and Sylvia longed for the support and understanding she felt was lacking in her relationship with Alex. The evening Sylvia broke the news of her departure was fraught with tension, the weight of unspoken words filling the room. Sylvia, you can't just leave. What about our family? Alex protested, his tone a mix of concern and frustration. Our family is falling apart, Alex. I need time to think and figure things out, Sylvia replied, 
her voice tinged with sadness. Margaret, always present in the background, interjected, You're being dramatic, Sylvia. Families face challenges. You can't just run away. This is not about running away, Margaret. It's about finding a space where we can breathe and reflect, Sylvia explained, her determination unwavering. As Sylvia packed her bags, the nursery felt emptier than ever, the unspoken pain of a family breaking apart hanging in the air. Think about what's best for our daughter, Sylvia, Alex pleaded, his desperation evident. I am, Alex, I'm thinking about her future, and right now, it feels like she deserves more than what we're offering her, Sylvia responded, the weight of her decision heavy on her heart. The chapter unfolded with Sylvia's journey back to her parents' home, a quest for emotional refuge and the support she yearned for. The nursery, once a symbol of shared dreams, now stood as a silent witness to a family in disarray. As Sylvia closed the door behind her, she wondered if the distance would provide the clarity needed to salvage what was left of their strained marriage. Separated from Alex, Sylvia delved into their financial situation, uncovering a harrowing reality of reckless spending and a looming financial crisis. As the abyss of their fiscal troubles unfolded, Sylvia faced the daunting task of deciding the fate of their marriage. One evening, Sylvia confronted Alex with the stark truth of their financial predicament. Alex, do you realize how dire our situation is? We're on the brink of financial ruin, Sylvia exclaimed, her voice a mixture of desperation and frustration. Alex, seemingly indifferent, replied, We've been through tough times before. We'll figure it out. Sylvia, unable to contain her anger, retorted, This is not just tough times, Alex. Your spending habits are pushing us to the edge. We can't keep living in denial. I work hard to provide for this family, Sylvia. I don't need you criticizing everything I do. Alex defended himself, his pride wounded. This is not about criticism, Alex. It's about facing the reality of our situation and making responsible choices, Sylvia countered, her patience wearing thin. As the chapter unfolded, Sylvia's decision to take legal action became more apparent. The nursery, once a sanctuary of dreams, echoed with the harsh reality of financial turmoil. I can't keep pretending everything is fine, Alex. I've taken legal action to protect our daughter and our future, Sylvia declared, her voice firm. Alex, now confronted with the consequences of his actions, responded with a mix of regret and defiance. You didn't have to go this far, Sylvia. We could have worked through it together. We tried, Alex. But your impulsive decisions and refusal to acknowledge the severity of our situation left me with no other choice, Sylvia explained, her tone carrying the weight of a marriage unraveling. The chapter closed with Sylvia contemplating the possibility of divorce, realizing that the abyss they faced was not just financial, but a reflection of the deeper chasm in their relationship. The once hopeful nursery now stood as a silent witness to a family on the verge of collapse. With legal actions underway and the financial crisis escalating, Sylvia found herself entangled in a web of collateral damage, affecting not only her relationship with Alex, but also the broader family dynamics. One evening, as Sylvia returned to her parents' home, she faced the fallout of her decisions. Sylvia, why are you doing this? Can't we find another way to resolve things? Alex pleaded, his frustration evident. We've reached a point where legal action is necessary, Alex. I can't keep ignoring the financial turmoil you've plunged us into, Sylvia explained, her determination unwavering. Margaret, always hovering in the background, interjected with a defensive tone, You're tearing this family apart, Sylvia. Is that what you want? This family was already falling apart, Margaret. I'm trying to salvage what's left, Sylvia retorted, her patience wearing thin. The once hopeful nursery, now a distant memory, echoed with the strains of a family torn apart by financial turmoil and emotional neglect. Think about the consequences, Sylvia. Our daughter deserves better than growing up in a broken home, Alex urged, 
his desperation palpable. Our daughter deserves a stable and secure environment, Alex. Right now, that seems impossible with the way things are, Sylvia responded, the weight of her decisions heavy on her heart. As the chapter unfolded, Sylvia faced the collateral damage of her choices, realizing the ripple effects on family relationships. I never wanted it to come to this, but I can't stand by and watch our lives crumble, Sylvia confessed, her voice tinged with regret. Margaret, now a reluctant participant in the family drama, reluctantly acknowledged, perhaps there's some truth in what Sylvia is saying, Alex, we need to confront the issues. The chapter closed with Sylvia grappling with the unintended consequences of her actions. The nursery, now a distant memory, stood as a silent witness to the collateral damage inflicted upon a family torn apart by financial strife and emotional neglect.